Hey, buddy. Hey. <laughs> how, how you doing? Doing pretty well. How good. about you? Good, good. How's the uh, weather been out there? Have you been able to golf? Uh, it's been incredibly hot, like real feel, 110. <laughs> oh, brutal. Yeah. Like um, you guys, because you guys get some pretty good humidity there, don't you? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, rough. All right. We got warm tonight, though, so hopefully that'll cool things down for the weekend. Yeah. But so, I mean, you guys, though, but I mean, you start September will be cool, right? Yeah. Or does it take till? I mean, what's weird about it out here, I hate that it's like November. It's like the longest summer in the world because it doesn't change until really it's like seems number first. It finally changes. Hmm. Um, now, like in October, we may start getting, we'll get some cooler nights, but God, until, I mean, you know, we'll still be hundreds. So it's like, it's, it, it's long, you know, from April to November. So that's what I feel like summer's like out here, but. Yeah. And you're probably outside like all day, pretty much. <laughs> yeah. It's weird this year. I've had to cut back. Like I'm busier than ever. And I've had to cut back on lessons and telling people no and stuff because I can't, this is the first year, um, Last year started getting to me, but this year the heat that has gotten to me, it's like crushed me a few times where I've just gotten sick and just, I, I think my body just can't handle being out there as much anymore. And it's just, I don't know. I don't know what it is. I don't know if there's something else wrong here or not, but I know if I'm out there too long, it will just destroys me. And so it's like, I have to limit the time I'm out there, which, you know, stinks, but it is what it is. I think for next year, I'll, I'm going to go, um, I'm going to be ready to go indoors in the summer. Okay. kind of get away from it have both options but um so tell me a little bit uh about how your game is going golf how you're doing with it and what you feel or how you feel about it yeah i feel like um yeah i feel like lately my irons have been pretty solid um yeah. i think I, the last time i played par three i played nine holes i hit every single green did you really yeah that's for that's that's really good i don't care where you play anytime any place that is really good that's not easy to do yes yeah, so that was nice that yeah. is beautiful i feel like the driver is um pretty sporadic sometimes i'll i'll be in a groove and i'll be crushing it but a lot of times um yeah i'm like not even hitting decent contact with it or whatever so um <laughs> So like I saw that one heel one, I mean, if you're not, if you're doing good, will you slice it still quite a bit if you're hitting bad? Yeah, sometimes, or yeah, I'll hit like a line, like I can't get it up in the air. I'll just hit low line drive. Okay. Um, okay. Yeah. And sometimes it'll go way left. So yeah, it's kind of a mixed bag. <laughs> yeah. I, you know, I think it's really weird people. Well, I, I don't think it's so weird, but people it, it's hard I feel like there's going to be a time in your life where, or around in your life where every, you know, that things come together, both of them. But I really feel like it's most of the time as a golfer, uh, the driver and the irons don't match up with each other. You know, one of them's just cruising along. And then guess what? You'll figure the driver out. You're like, what's the deal with my irons? I'm hitting like four irons <laughs> or four greens out of nine now. What, what the hell happened? And yeah. I think it's because they're different swings. I really, I, you know, we have to, I mean, you think of a driver or we're trying to hit up on it. So we have different ball position. We're wanting to release the club a little bit more in our hands instead of having, you know, kind of flexion in our hands or our left wrist. So hitting down on it. So I think those things, it's just, you know, everybody says, oh, it's just a different swing. Just get your tilt and ball position. I'm like, no, it's not. I mean, the release is different, right? So I still think for you, I'll say this over and over, you have to learn how to hit a big hook with that thing. You have to make it your goal to start that ball 30 yards right of the target, 20 yards right, and hook it. Now, I mean, that's not how you want to play golf, but you have to, you will have figured it out when you know how to do that. Unless you can now that I don't know of, but I don't think you have that ability now, do you? Could you throw a huge hook out there like that consistently? Not consistently, no. I, I yeah. Mean, yeah, sometimes I'll get it, but yeah. <laughs> yeah, so I think it should be, you know, I, I feel like, well, we'll, we'll look, let's look at some swings here, but I feel like it's um, your irons. I mean, like that one I showed, or I think that one I looked at was really good. I can't, I looked at your drivers as the one I sent you something on, right, that one day? 
I don't think I looked yeah, at these. You sent me one for the iron and then one for the driver. Okay. Well. Okay. okay. Um, I mean, the, I thought these things looked really good. How are you feeling with using the ball? Like, does it feel good now or do you still hate it? <laughs> no, it feels good. Sometimes I'll drop it at the end. Um, yeah, it's fine. It's fine, really. Yeah. So what do you feel when you're doing this here? I mean, are you are you feeling your elbows like a push together there or, or have you created a feeling there yet? Yeah, I guess it's more like my forearms being pushed together. Okay. Um, I guess that's that's because where I'm squeezing the ball, but um, yeah. yeah. <clears throat> okay. So, like, even even looking at this one here, if I look at like it's so obviously it misses a little bit of a frame. So I think it would probably be right on your hands. So this is this ball here or this shot would be. If, I can't. Are you um? Are you trying to share your screen? Oh, I'm not sharing it. Am I? Hold on a second. Sorry. <laughs> I didn't even hit share. I do have a recording. I got that part on. <laughs> share screen. Here we go. Thank you. Yeah. Share. Okay. Good now? Yeah. Okay. Um, let's see. So, like this one, you can see here where the club is. Like, if it were parallel to the ground, I think a club head would probably be on your hands, probably, which is, like, dead neutral, which is great. Um, mm -hmm. I still feel like for you, you need to figure out how to get the club head back here on your hands when it's parallel to the ground. So that, that way it's coming a little more from the inside. I, I just feel like the, I feel like somebody who's like you like has the, I feel like if you go wrong, you're not going to go wrong by getting more on the inside. You're going to go wrong in your golf game because you're going to go more out here. Right. Um, yeah. So I, that's why I feel like it's so important to learn this inside one more. I mean, you've come a lot. I mean, the, this is a, this is a, this is great, right? here. If you could reproduce this, it's awesome. But I think we do need to have it in our bag also to know how to get this club here. But I think, I mean, the positioning on this stuff is just perfect. You know, and then I, you know, like I've talked to you about too with this, and I'll show you this front side of something you can work on to, like, what is this seven iron? Like, how far do you are you carrying your seven iron? Um, you if I hit a good like one eighty, yeah, that's pretty. That's good distance. Okay, and you get a good spin and height. Yeah. Okay, that's good. I still think you got. I mean, you you have room to go still in speed here. Um. It's just a matter of not using your, you don't use your lead leg to push you up as much as you could and to push that hip back for power. Cause see how it's still bent there, still, still, still. Meaning if you're getting ground reaction forces, it has to be what you're pushing in that that's where you're gonna get back, right? So what you're basically doing is absorbing it. Yeah. Like that. It, I mean, here, here's the thing, is it, something you need to work on right away or something that's a priority no i mean i think it's something that you know for the future um it, and even if it's not just distance um you know helping getting us i mean you do good with clearing but clearing using this leg to help provide the clearance is good and you know just checkpoints here i'd, I'd say for you or this if you're when you're here i feel like this is like one frame off there we go like you're going to want to look at this and say, okay, how do I get to be ideal more here at this point? You know, you're a lot better. I mean, you were like this before <laughs> down there. <laughs> mm -hmm. You don't release it all, but we want to try to get there if we can. So a good drill, I'll, I'll tell you this, a good one is with this ball, start with it like in the lead, lead position right in front of your hands and, or I mean, in front of your, uh, body just right in front of it like if you're in a dress position and just um i would swing back i don't know like a foot that's it and then swing through and that's where i feel like you can really work on your leg too feeling that but just trying to feel like you hold like have this angle more here you see what i'm saying yeah and where you're really i think um 
like, I, this is good swing. I'm just telling you things to look out for in the future and stuff for you to look at. Um, let's watch this wrist move. This, I mean, that's a pretty good move there. What you would look for is to see, like, okay, could I have a little bit more of this here like that? So more um, wrist hinge there and not releasing it as much, but it's still not, I think, I don't know, it's still a good amount. I think it's still pretty darn good. It would just, I'd, I would say it'd make you more efficient um, if you get to that point. Okay. Let's see. Um, so with the, um, with the leg, like staying bent and the lead leg not staying, not straightening and using the ground force. Is that um, like, is that because I'm too far forward a little bit at impact? Like with, with my body, I guess, or? No, I don't, I don't, I just don't, um, I don't think your butt, we'll, we'll look at this, I'll show you. I, I thought you did pretty good there with your body. It's hard to get the body up. Well, let's look at this one here, too far forward. Wait, is this face on? Um, you know, the key is, are we keeping our head back? But I, well, I'm gonna, let's look at this one. I think this is, that's not the one I looked at, isn't it? Seven iron face. Okay, no, seven iron. This is, I don't, yeah, this one. Okay. But I think this one's a five iron, I think here. But let's just look at this real quick. I'll show you like kind of how, how I would look at it. I mean, you see where your hip is at right there? Yeah. I mean, you're not too far forward. Now let's watch your, let's see what your head does. If you, if you move it past, I'll start it right here. I don't care what you do right there. Let's see, you kick it back a little bit, like right here, I think. Yeah. See how you move it back right there? Mm -hmm. So you get there, you know? Um, so you, I feel like it's, um, how do you practice it? You got to practice it with small shots first. Like I just, like I told you doing that, just barely going up and then pushing back on your leg and feeling that um, push back. But cause I mean, you, it, it, you're gonna have more cognizant and more aware of what's going on on the ground is what it basically is. Um, I don't know, I wouldn't make it, you know, it's not causing a problem in your swing. It's just like, how could you be a little bit more efficient, right? Um, okay. So I don't know if I'd make it a huge priority of yours. If you ever feel like you want to just start going for it, I would. I mean, you know, like, and the reason I say for you, the front is important is because you hit the ball really far when you have your feet together. Um, so I think you're going to probably gain most from your rotary is your strongest, I think, component. Most likely it's just how your body turns is you produce a lot of power there. And then I think you're more like a center posted player where you're going to I think you're giving away the stuff on your front leg, which you could, which you could gain from. Um, so okay. it's almost, so if we were to look at this, I, I'll pull up a video of somebody else here in a second and kind of show you what you'd have to do. It's basically you're coming down and you're gaining knee flex. So you come here, you get that, you get your, you got your knees flexed nicely here. Then it's pushing off. So we need to be pushing off hard like our maximum push is right here. That's how early it has to happen. This yeah. is going to be pushing super hard back this way behind you almost. Right. Um, but the, you know, where your body is at on that line is good. Okay. Yeah. Let's see this one here. The other thing I'd say for this with your driver, and I don't is is I would get um, I would get more lined up with your body to the right and everything with the driver to help you out. 
to get it start. If you want to get it more started to the right, I would get more lined up to the right. Okay. We're pretty good about getting the clubs or of getting a path to help follow our body. And I think you, the way you swing now is so good. I think you'll be fine. So look what you look at this here. So does that make sense about lining up right? Like um, you can even, even if it's more comfortable, you, it's getting that right foot back too for you. Okay. Like with the driver, I would really, I would really play around with that. Like if this were driver here, I would, I would feel like your foot is back here, the toe. Okay. That's going to help promote you coming inside to out um, and help you get that draw and get it started over the right. You're just going to feel like you can't miss it when you can swing as hard as you want and know that ham's starting out to the right and hopefully it comes back. If it doesn't, whatever, I'm on the right side of the fairway or maybe, you know, um, it just depends how far you started out there. But I would really play around with moving yourself this way. Like, I don't love to do that with people right away. Like I want them to try to figure out things on their own to see if they can shallow it enough and see what they can do to get in that position. But I feel like eventually there's a time where it's okay just to be, it's not like it's a cheat, you know, it's, it's, it makes sense in a lot of ways because if you think about it with a driver where we're coming our low point, and then you take in the factor of, our low point is back here. We're swinging up on it, which means the curve has started going back around this way. That's how we get a positive attack angle, right? So the club is swinging to the left here, right? So it would make more sense if we swing more into out to help us do it. So since the ball's in the front of our stance, right? And you're swinging up on it as close as you can, that's where your positive attack angle is. But it also means the club is traveling kind of to the left at that point, right? So it would make more sense to aim up to the right for you. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, and then this thing here, I feel like you do a great job shallowing this right here. Now, if you look at that angle, look at it, how it continues, it's, it steepens. See how it never gets on this line here? Right, like right here, your shallows can be. I mean, you, you're totally like, this is a great move here. You're just let, I mean, that's beautiful. You're just letting it fall, but then your hands are like, okay, I got this. <laughs> and any, if we're applying a lot of pressure here in our, our grip, like it automatically starts standing up. And I, I, I'm positive that's what goes on with your driver more and more. You know, it's just, it's that hand, but it's, I think it's okay to put pressure on our hands, but we have to not do it in the, in, in a steepening manner, okay? Like if you're shallowing this thing so good, try to maintain that longer. So the club is back here when you come through, not here. Now, I mean, this is gonna be a perfect shot, but if we're trying to get here to have that ability, do it. Then you'll have both shots. Yeah. You know? then, then you'll have the ability to work it a lot better. But you do, I mean, this shallowing, most people can never get this move right there which is just, you did it perfect. You just got to not let the hands by you pulling on steeping it. And if we look close, I'm starting to see like a cupping in your wrist, the left one here. If you look at that, see it, how it's cupping a little bit now? Yeah. If you were to remove that by giving it a little motorcycle move, turning that the uh, uh, logo down towards the ball in essence, that would move the club back behind you, straighten out your wrist and put you in a better position. Um, but it's like, it's, you hit this ball. Great. I mean, that's the thing is I hate like tearing apart swings that are good like this, except like here, I like, you know, your hands are exiting good. Yeah. I mean, so it's kind of. I don't know, nitpicking in a way, but I'm also trying to give you stuff to work on for the future, you know? Right. Yeah, no, that's helpful. Okay. Um, I think we'll leave drivers to get together. I don't know which one I put up there. Toe pop up or the uh, <laughs> down the line top. <laughs> yeah, that Let's was see. 
those were like um either right after one another or, yeah so that and it's just two extremes one is off the heel one is off the toe so that's yeah that was kind of like where i realized i don't really have control of even where i'm swinging <laughs> yeah so th there's your toe right and then here let's see if i i don't know if this tore heel i can't remember if I, I don't know if i put the wrong one up that's toe too yeah, those are the, is that the same video? Yeah, it changes. That's the toe one. My hydrogen's the toe. Okay, so this one should be the other one. Yeah, okay. Okay, so like, um, when I see this happening, when you can't hit the club face square um, on the back of the ball where you want to, I think there's, there's a couple things going on that I think are important is first off, it's very hard. I think to do it, it blows my mind that we can even do it. Right. <laughs> like I'm surprised more shots don't look like these two <laughs> that, that you hit. Right. I mean, it's just, it's, I think it's really hard, but to me, the best way to fix is this and other people will probably say different. I don't know, but I really like to I have my students swing up to the top and then come down really slow to the golf ball and then stop. And what you're going to find is when you get behind it is like, if, let's say you're used to having an open club face or you're, you're used to missing on the heel or toe, you're going to get down to that ball the first time probably and be right on the toe or heel. And I think that's when the mind really starts to recognize it, like what, where it's going, the path to it. So I think we have to spend time telling reminding ourselves exactly where that ball is and i to me that's the best way to do it that and also um using some kind of um mental imagery like there's one thing i so if you use um there's a couple different things you can do is one is looking at the ball and say i'm going to hit it in this spot right like some people use the inside of the ball and that'll help them go in and out I really don't like that thought a ton unless someone's really struggling because it's, it produces like a hit action. You're just hitting the ball. Like, I think it takes the swing out of it, but another, um, I think great way imagery is, and it just, I think it works awesome is if you picture yourself driving a nail through that golf ball on whatever angle you want. So you got to think you got to look down at that ball and go, okay, here's the nail head that I'm going to hit, you know, which is going to be at, you know, some kind of, you know, angle, whatever it is like that. Right. And you just tell yourself, do it. You're, you'll be just, you could be having the worst day hitting the golf or hitting the ball driving. And then you go, Oh shoot, let me try this out. You'll just smoke it. You're like, what the hell? <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's just, sometimes it's like, we have to just like, uh, you know, go back to the hundred percent basics of just like, got to hit it right here. Right. It's like, we do all these other things and and most of the time we do really good with doing all these other things, but then sometimes we lose it. Um, so I feel like that's, um, I, for you, I would prescribe those two things, go to the top swing, back. you don't have to do it a lot, but may, you know, if you're, if I were at the, uh, driving range and I had this issue, I'd swing to the top, come back to the ball really slow and then swing. I don't know, do it 10 times in a row, whatever. And you're going to get it. You'll have it back. Okay. Okay. I, I just don't, there's other people who tell you there's all these reasons there. Oh, there's this, a, a technical reason why you went to your toe, why you went to heel. And yes, there usually is something that moves the hands out there that way, or pulls them in something, but you're not a big early extender. Like if I saw you really early extending and hitting on the heel and stuff, that would be something different. I'd be like, Oh, you got to fix that. Like, I'm not going to tell you like some little gimmick or whatever, but it's, um, you're not doing that. Um, Okay. So I, I just think you don't know where the ball is sometimes like your mind. It's just, it's like, what, it, I'm not real sure where that is. And I kind of think it makes a lot of sense. Yeah. I mean, see, like you don't. You do a good job getting back there. So, okay, let's look at this one now then.
So once again, your transition is incredible. Like right here, this, this spot right here, when I look at this club face matching your form, like this is professional grade right here. Your elbow, like this is, everything is just perfect. Um, I should mark this right here because I, I want you to see what happens with your steepening. You're, just, you're gonna have to kill your steepening. <laughs> Make that, you know, the, I mean, I, I don't wanna say number one goal because I feel like there's, you know, other things you're still doing, but um, I feel like you gotta get, you, you've you killed it a lot since we started working together. I mean, you were, your swing from the very beginning was just way over. Um, but um, now it's like you lay it off perfect and get into this perfect position. I mean, this is right here, this boom, it just drops. Okay, so look at this angle of it right here. So we have, this is basic, let me get this perfect here. So I transition. I mean, your hands are really high too, which is awesome. I mean, that's, that's a powerful move. So when you hit your driver well, how far are you hitting it? Like, do you know carry about? Um, seemed like I was getting it uh, close to 300 at least. Uh, I'm that that was, you know. That's cool. That's good. That's awesome. Yeah. I, I, and I don't know, Carrie, it's probably more, that's where it was rolling out to, but yeah. Oh, okay. So probably 270 ish, which is still big. That's huge. You're yeah. what, what kind of driver is this? <laughs> it's an old one that I need to, okay. yeah, I'm going to try to get a new one soon, but yeah, it's, that's like what I bought right after high school, just from like a, um, a standard like Dick's bag that you get okay. or whatever. Yeah. It's so a cute that's, thing. well, you know, what's sweet though, is like, you're one of those people that are still lucky enough that you're going to get that big game. Like you're going to get the new technology in a driver that like, this one doesn't have. So it's like, you know, if you had bought something five, six years ago, you don't get those big gains anymore, but you'll get it from this to whatever you get. And the, okay. the technology will be so different, whatever you get. I mean, I, the drivers are so good. I mean, I, I've always told people, like, if you want to save money, like drivers, you can buy one a generation or two generations old. That's good. You know, like, especially, do you guys have like second swings there and stuff? secondswing.com like where you can go in and or any like big used places of used clubs that actually have hitting bays and stuff inside there or do you have anything like that there yeah i'm not aware of where you, like a store that has used clubs um i had heard of like isn't there like a callaway where you can buy used clubs or something i forget the callaway name. Ha yeah callaway has them um so, you know they have some out here it's called like second swing and they have tons of used ones but they the good thing is you can go in there too in the store and try their stuff out and that way you know it's right. But the other thing you can do is this, is you could go to, I don't know what stores you have out there, but if any of them do like a free like fitting or something for a driver, yeah. um, you could go do that. And then, um, then you'll know what shaft you need. And then you just buy like a generation old one or, gener or two generation old one. Okay. You know, I buy some balls from them or something. So give them something for doing it or, or whatever. I don't know. But, you know, it's like, I, I feel like it, it's if you want to save money, it's, it's up to you um, on how you want to do it and get, make sure you get titles. <laughs> <laughs> They're titles. coming out with a new one here soon too. So. Yeah. I have uh, Mizuno. I have Mizuno irons. I just got last year, like before I started working with you. Yeah. You think, you think Titleist is uh is actually much better or you're like affiliated uh, with Titleist or yeah I, I, my I would say this there are um my, I, I Mizuno is my favorite forever you know like I switched to Titleist I don't know five or six years ago and it's just the reason I switched was because Mizuno doesn't do much for staff I mean staff like me anymore um and Titleist will so it, that was one of my main switches but Titleist is so their drivers rate super high. Um, they're the they're 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 the number one driver on tour, and it's like, and they're not paid to get there. Okay, now do they people have paid? Yeah, but think about this: their highest paid player is um, uh, Justin Thomas. They pay him five million a year. Like all those other guys, like DJ and all them, they make like thirty million with TaylorMade. 
Okay. So that just goes to show you like there, these people are all playing these. I mean, that doesn't mean there aren't other good ones out there. Drivers. I do not. Um, somebody said something to me about the new Mizuno driver. I, I, I don't know much about it. I really don't. Um, they've never been known really for drivers. So, you know, I, I don't love the tailor made, but like the, um, the pings rate really high too. Um, I think the new Cobras are rated really high. Um, so they just, there's a lot of, um, um, you know, I, I would say those three or four, the thing is like all of them are great now, pretty much most from most manufacturers, <laughs> they really are. Mm -hmm. um, they all make a great product now, not like it used to be. Like when I grew up with Mizunos, those were like the best by far. Like they were using in their irons, like tolerances of like thousands, like machining stuff. And other companies are like using stuff in the hundreds. Like that's how like, they, so they're like, that's crazy. Like how, you know, uh, far above they were have, of everybody with their precision. Um, but now everybody is using down to the thousands of much, you know, cause they all have the same, they can all buy that same equipment now, but you know, they manufactured it on their own, did that. And that's why the Zuno irons were the best for probably 30 something years on tour. Number one, by far, like you look in every bag and you find the Zuno irons on tour you know, no matter what their bag said. Okay. But you know, now everybody makes good ones. So, um, yeah, I, I, I would just, if you have a place where you can go hit some, I think a lot of it has to do with, uh, what you think of the look of it. Um, you know, if there's anywhere to go look, I would just, uh, go try them out and then, you know, see if you want to get used one or new one or whatever. Um, okay. Let's see this hand path. And if I get fitted for a driver or if I pick out what driver I want, is it then I would just get like the matching three wood? Um, or are those yeah, <laughs> I, I would I would skip a three wood if I were you. I would go to I think gapping is better. What's your lowest iron? Five iron. And I, well, yeah. Currently, I have a I, I have a three I hybrid, but it's the same one as my driver. So I'd be looking for. A uh, new driver through three hybrid or whatever. Okay, yeah. so you'd want to get three. You, okay, so I would I would look at some combo. It's hard for me to tell you. Of, I would think of a four wood, and then fitting a hybrid in. And I don't know which one that would be for you for distance. I mean, um, to see which one works the best. Now, Titleist, like their hybrids are incredible. They the adjustments they have on them, you can go one and a half degrees either way without changing the lie angle. You can open the face if you want. It's just, it's awesome. So you can buy a 21 degree, let's just say, or 24 or 27. I think they even have 29 now, maybe that came out with hybrid, but I would get one hybrid because they're just, they're great to use. I wouldn't get a three. I, I, I really, I'd get a four because what happens is most people struggle with a three is getting height on it. And if you don't get enough height on it, you're wasting your time. Like, it's not going to go that far. So you might as well get a four wood and you'll pump. I mean, you'll kill forward. Okay. I mean, gapping wise. Now, I mean, I'm not going to tell you, like, if you go try some out and find a three wood, you're just sitting great and then go for it. But um, I'll tell you this though, that th the, I would think four, four is going to be easier to hit. And then I'd make sure you get a hybrid and the hybrid is just going to be something that fits between your five iron and four wood whatever distance your five iron would how far do you think you hit your five iron uh yeah maybe two two ten ish okay so two ten. you know so you'd probably want you know a hybrid that can do probably two are you talk 225 to 230 and then you're like 255 ish, right? With to 260 maybe with that four wood type deal. And then you're, you know, busting whatever the driver, however far that is. Okay. Um, and I would also think too about, you know, like think about courses you play or, you know, courses you play, but I think having a good, figuring out like having that, you got to figure out. So if you fly your five iron that, what are you going to do if you're at a 220 par three? I mean, or something. So I feel like you got to have a stick for something like that that can get you over 200, something like that. And the hybrid will help you get height too. So I, I mean, I would, I would try to find something that if you can hit that five two. What'd you say? Was it two ten? You said about 
Yeah. So yeah, I think you'd want to probably get into two twenty five ish about with that with the hybrid. But plus, that's gonna be a good utility club for a lot of other reasons too, though that you can use chipping whatever if you have it. So that'd be my okay. Advice. Yeah. So hand pass. So I just want you to say, so look at the angle of the club here. It's pretty much matching the plane. So you've dropped it right down the plane, but then see how it's leaving it now and getting steeper a bit. Yeah. Actually, it probably has just stayed the same from this move you made. So you drop it down here and you really do kind of keep it the same, just a little bit above it. But then here's where we lose it. I don't like, I don't do not like seeing the club out here. Look where you're approaching from. We have to approach this ball from in here and, and shallow, really shallow. I think you're really going to take off and like this, the aiming up your body and foot to the right. Um, so I would figure, let's, let's say this is right down target. I would move this to. This is just with your driver I'm talking about, okay? To here. There's your body line up and then drop the right foot back another couple inches and play with that a little bit. But that is going to help you come in on a really shallow angle is what you need. Um, and you're not on a real shallow angle here. Okay. So that's one of your, that's when, one of the reasons it's hard when you're not shallow. You're trying to time out this ball or this club coming down a, a, a steeper angle. And... I'm just trying to look at something here, see if there's something. Yeah, and I think the other thing that'll help you too is if you look how open you are, are here. I'm not saying it's bad, but I feel like you're, we'll, we'll look, I'll look at this a little closer, but I feel like you get aimed up more to the right. It's going to help hold your body in there a little longer. So the more we open up, like this with you're doing with your body, which is good for some things is look at the, it just keeps pulling the club out here. Right. See that? Yeah. Verse. Think about if your back just stayed right where it is right now. And if we could just picture that, what would the club do? It would drop down here and work around exactly what we're trying to do. If we kept our back to the target, it, your arms, just think about it would keep dropping and you would swing on that plane. Um, so it's almost like you've got to feel like your upper body, your chest and everything is staying closed longer is the feeling you're going to need to get to get this club more behind you. Okay. So like, um, what I would do is I'd go up to the top and I would do some practice swings of coming back down to parallel with your club without moving your upper body. So just swing to here in a practice swing and then do not move your upper body and just drop your arms down to about here. I'm trying to feel that feeling. That's practice though. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. And so, yeah, it was interesting because you were saying my hips were opening up, but then you're saying concentrate on the upper body. I mean, I guess they're connected or whatever. Um, yeah. Well, so there, there should be more hip. I mean, when I'm looking at this and I can't tell exactly right here, we should have a greater, your hips are greater than your chest. But I feel like it's your chest is open a lot too, which I don't, I don't think is terrible. I just feel like you you're going to be better. It's going to be easier to keep the club behind you. I don't want you to worry about your hips at all. It'll be easier to keep the club behind you when your back is, and I mean this is just a thought that your back is to the target longer. Um, if you just take practice swings and just stand up and feel it, oh, if I keep my back here, and you drop the hands down, you'll be like, oh man, my club is like way behind me. So what will eventually bring it out? Your rotation, okay? So that's like I said with your rotation. So I wouldn't fo focus on your lower body. I, I would focus on like a real good drill for you is that what I just told you. I think, did I ever send you that Justin Rose one, that feel and reel? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so where he puts his butt out too. And I don't, you don't really need to focus on that. I mean, he's trying to do prepare or I mean, help himself with early extension too. But he feels that club staying. This is he, you're doing exactly what he does that practice for. You, your rotation and everything is going like this, it, which is pulling the club out here. So you're going to have to feel like this back stays closed to the target. 
or your back stays, you know, towards the target, I guess is what the right word, yeah. And then you're just rotating. So do it really slow to feel it. Like just do a practice one, go up, keep your back to the target, drop your arm and you're gonna be like, that club is way behind you. It is, but then when you rotate, you're like, oh, there it goes, it'll come out. And you're not gonna do it as much when you swing. I think that along with your right, you'll tell me in a, in a couple of days that you're slinging them way out there to the right, if you do that. Okay. And you're, you know, like mess around with it. Cause remember this, if you, if, if you don't want to get to this, I, and I just want to give you a warning, like, let me see if this one comes down better. Like, like right on frame here. That's better. Now look at this one though. See, this one's coming. Well, is that parallel? Yeah, let's see if I get this. Uh, it's not quite parallel. So it'd probably be at your hands there. Um, so if this were parallel, we don't want, you know, if the club is back here behind your hands, that's fine. You don't want to start getting it back here, which, you know, you can do by doing that drill and stuff like that. You just get it way too far behind. So your check is this. It's like, if you're coming down, you got this green line below here, the, this one right here, you're trying to get this club at a minimum, at least getting onto this line with your driver. You see, I'm, you see how different you are off of it with this one versus your irons? Yeah. Yeah. So that's why I'm always like, your bad uh, swing is to go more towards that over the top-ish move. And you rotate really fast, which is a huge benefit of yours. And I, I would never want to slow that down, your rotation. But I think you need to be thoughtful of how you're doing that and i think the aiming and trying that move is going to help you get this thing way behind you so yeah now since this club is in parallel we can't tell to the ground i mean but if it were i bet it would track down to maybe on your hands which this one's better and then but this one's the yeah okay so do you say you're having height issues too yeah because <laughs> you can see i mean like that one, I think yeah. skipped right in front of me. Yeah. Yeah. Usually, like um, hitting them too, too way too low. Um, low. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, I think you're gonna get this whole different feeling by setting up how I'm telling you to do and learning how to sling from the inside. We need you to come in really so much more shallow, and then on the way up. So, I feel like just doing those two things will help you because if you look how you're coming in, this isn't real. Uh, shallow when you look how that uh, angle there and you're hitting it on a negative attack angle here too you see that it's coming down mm -hmm. yeah which i don't know i mean as far as you hit it you may be able to hit down one degree i mean you may be able to um i don't i don't know 100 for sure i'd have to see the stats on the track man but you may be able to but even that being said it still needs to be like coming down more from in here which if you think about it, if you just take yourself right in this swing here and shift yourself this way if we could move you your whole body and shift it think how we had almost fix it just by changing your body yeah that makes sense yeah yeah so play around with that see how, see how it works um i and yeah i know you don't give up quick so i mean do it a whole time i just feel like um most people I'll find out, well, I, I mean, I know they just did this study. I don't know if I told you this, but people will try golfers. They'll do it twice. <laughs> so you give them a drill, right? And they go to the range. They're like, okay, I'll fire it up. They go try it. They'll hit it twice. Or they find something on YouTube. They'll do it twice. And I don't know how they figured this part out, but they, they said if they would have done it five times, I guess, well, actually, I do know why. Because they had this other group of people that tried the same thing. So if you had tried it five times, you would have figured it out. But most people quit after two. And they're like, oh, I'm done with that. <laughs> I'm going to go back to what didn't work before anyways. <laughs> yeah, that's interesting. <laughs> it isn't, isn't it? It's, it's, it's why golfers suck because of stuff like that. <laughs> you know what I mean? So you, you do a lot of good things um, in your swing here. I, I, would, I think you still need to make that a big priority. Like, you know, I've said is getting this club back here behind you. So your, you know, drill is to go up here. You, you transition great but this back has to feel like it's staying closed for long. 
and that's going to be easier with your alignment. But yeah, so we started we yeah. started talking about how like the iron and driver swing are a little bit different, but I mean the the goal of getting that um, you know stop the steepening or whatever that that applies to both of them, and probably the um, the keeping the back to the target would apply to both of them. It's just the, the the shifting of the feet and the stance that you would say is only for driver yes yeah for for sure only for driver um i do want you to feel like you get it behind your hands a little more with your irons because you're you're like right on your hands like it's it's good i mean it's like it, right now it's like it's really good where it's at right there but you have a tendency on your bad shots <laughs> to go the other way where that club head when it gets down to parallel is going to be kind of like on the outside mm -hmm. of your hands. So that's why I feel like it's so important for you to, um, to have that ability with your clubs because of that. Um, I feel like, so a lot of these tour guys are hard to look at because they cut it, but even this, if you look right here, look at his hips versus shoulders and think, do you remember what yours were like? yeah <laughs> yours were open yeah 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 i mean almost i mean i don't know the exact number but pretty close to that so you're gonna have to feel yourself staying really close this is <laughs> you'll probably start hitting some huge hooks this way I'd be like man eric what's the problem now i now i have no control of this club <laughs> but if you do if that starts happening just back off everything you've done a little bit right that means don't um if you're if you close your stance three degrees go to two if it starts going crazy hooks okay yeah um so you really yeah. gotta you gotta um figure out how to separate your upper body and lower body um yeah which <laughs> i think you can because the way you clear i mean i don't think that's i yeah. really don't think that's an you know like um I mean, I don't think, yeah, I don't think you, there's a lot of people who physically can't um, do it, but you can. Um, let's just sit here. Why is this thing? Oh, wait, I go figure. Here it is. There we go. How about that? Let's figure it out. That moves, yeah. But what you need to do, though, really, for this, you don't, I mean, I don't think you need to do that. I think it's okay to gain some swing to the top and gain some knee flex back. I mean, you don't have to do that if you don't want. I mean, it's a good, I think it's a great feeling to get because that's really what we want to do, except mm -hmm. on not such an extreme level. Um, but for you, for sure, this is something you want to probably look how close his shoulders are. They haven't moved at all, have they? Right. But look where the club is way behind them. That's what I want you to feel like this club is so far behind you. But the thing is, he can hit it from here with rotation. Rotation is always going to throw that club out, right? So you move, your rotation is really fast. And I've never wanted to slow you down with that, but it's always trying to figure out how do we get you in a position of, um, so you can use your talents, which I think is a lot of your, that's why you hit the ball so good feet together. You rotate really, really well. And that's, I think your biggest, um, well, it's obviously your biggest power source, but one of the best things you do in golf. So I've, like, I've never wanted to slow down any of your movements. And I feel like, um, this may be funky at first with your body, with it being feeling closed, but like all things, you'll get used to it because you'll start seeing that you can sling this ball way out here now. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah. So in the, in the end, remember this, if we are, and I know you're getting a lot better about this, but if this is our target line and you're swinging on a path like this, we got to have our club head here. Yeah. To get that draw. The perfect one. If it comes in on here, we're going to get a, if you start swinging way inside out and it comes like square, you're going to get a massive hook. Mm 
And so that's why I think this is why it's really important for you to film yourself and look at it and say, did I come inside out? Because if you, let's say you have this pattern and you swing out to here, your club face came in like this, which is a little bit closed. This ball would start out here, left of your target. So most likely you would think I came over the top a little bit, right? But it was just your club face. Yeah. That's why it's so important to know that you're always, I mean, for you, at least close to it, know you're coming from the inside a bit because then you can analyze what you're doing with your swing. Like, um, like, I don't think you come over the top with your irons. I mean, you don't. Now, I think, I don't think I answered your question really, did I, about irons versus woods and this move with shoulders or did I? Um, yeah, I think, I think you did. You, know, you were saying we want to, we want to also, um, work on the same thing with the, with the iron basically. Yep. Yep. I, you know, and, and I don't, I feel like since you're hitting your irons, well, work on it a little bit, I feel like, um, but we, I don't think you have to feel the club getting as far behind you with your irons as you're going to want with your driver right now. Um, yeah, you can practice it. It's fine doing it. I just, I just feel like if, you know, you're hitting your irons well, you don't need to do a ton different with it. But it, if you're practicing this with your driver, it's going to flow into your regular swing too. And it won't be bad for you. This will be good. Um, okay. This will be real good for you. So um, I'll, I'll send you this one again here. So you have it just separate because I don't know if I sent it separate or not. But otherwise, do you have any questions for me? Um, yeah, I don't think so. Yeah, I mean, that all makes sense. You're welcome um, to use what I what I tell people about this with the app, like using the library. Like I pay for it. Like if I don't, I tell people this. I'm not going to cut you off of it. Like if I don't talk to you or hear from you in like a year or something then I, you could get removed from the app, but for sure, like I put a note on stuff to, and I try not to even do that. You know what I mean? It's like, cause I, you, so you can still use it. That library is yours. If you want to use it. Um, that's, I can't even see what you do in the library. That's whatever. So you're welcome to use it. It's just, I, I just tell you like, if, if, you know, if I haven't heard from you in two or three years and for some reason I, I need the space or they need it, like, you know, I can't guarantee you're going to have this for life. <laughs> right. So yeah. Um, but I mean, you're, you're welcome to use it and, you know, maybe you will have it for life. I, you know, I don't, I don't know. Uh, it wouldn't, yeah. I, it wouldn't, it wouldn't bother me as long as I'm using it. It wouldn't bother me just, you know, keep on using it. So it's, you know, it's a great, it's a great app. So. Yeah, definitely plan to keep using it and yeah, I'll definitely plan to be in touch too. Yeah. Like I said, I'll plan to come back, um, you know, September, um, see where I'm at. Yeah. yeah. Keep me up to date, though. Tell me how things are going. Um, you know, don't feel like you can't ask me a question if you have to. If you something's going haywire or you want to ask me something, just send me a video and ask me a question. I might just just do it. Whatever, it's fine. Okay. okay. I don't want you. I don't want you out there struggling for no reason if something happens. Cool. All right, buddy. I did see that um, there was a new you. You were on that podcast again. I I oh, don't. Yeah. So I haven't listened to it yet, though. But oh, okay, that. <laughs> <laughs> it's an interesting one. It's kind of funny. Well, it's funny because we had to redo it. We did it on one Monday, and he listened to it, and it sounded terrible for some reason. Um, he could hear stuff in the background, so we had to redo it. So it's just kind of funny. Fred's a Fred's an awesome guy just to talk to. Okay. Yeah. So it's just he's a. Uh, I think that's the third. I think the third time I've been on that show, but. Good stuff. Yeah. Hopefully you like it. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure I will. <laughs> All right, buddy. Good luck. Let me know if you need anything, but otherwise uh, we'll talk to you in a little bit and take care. Yeah. Really appreciate it. All right. Take care, buddy. Talk to you soon. Yeah. Bye. Right, see ya. Bye.